everybody in the sports world. I am Big Wave Dave, your host of the Big Sports Debate, along with your boy, Chris Showtime Cannon. What up, Chris? What up, Big Wave? How's it going up there in SoCal? It's going good, man. Everything's on fire up here, but we're trying to stay safe. Hope you're, you're good down in the San Diego area. Sand dog, as we like to call it. But, uh, you know, Chris and I have been friends for over 30 years. We kind of share our brain when it comes to a lot of sports topics, but we figure we give you a good sports show. We do uh, kind of debate each other and, and do differ on some topics, so we're going to get right into it. Hope everybody's safe on this Sunday. The first topic I have for you, Chris, is, and we've discussed this before, but never really on air, is a dream matchups that you would have, that you would love to see in our lifetime, two teams in the NBA that you would love to see face off against each other. And I have a hint as to what one of those teams may be. Uh, Chris is a huge L.A. homer, as am I, but for this show, I'm going to go a little little different with, I'm not going to do all L.A. picks, but, you know, most of them, because L.A. is the mecca of the sports universe. So give me two teams, Chris, in the NBA that you'd love to see match up over our lifetime, which is the past 40 years. All right, so my favorite player team, Magic in the 80s. So I'll say Magic's 80s teams against Durant's and Steph's 2017 Warriors. Okay, who do you think would win that matchup? Uh, I think it depends on how physical they could play. If it's physical, Lakers easily. Um, Passing-wise, both teams pass good, so the Warriors would have a chance. But, I mean, Durant is the X factor in any series like that. Nobody will be able to guard Magic or Durant. But if Durant plays at like a, you know, a Jordan or something level, maybe they'd win. But I got my money on the Lake Show. And then if there was a, one other team, I'd probably still go with the Lakers against the Bulls of the 90s. But I want to see Kobe's Lakers against, you know, Jordan's Bulls to see how good Kobe really was. So when you say Kobe's Lakers, are you talking about the Kobe Lakers without Shaquille O'Neal or the Kobe Lakers with Shaquille O'Neal? Oh, man. It doesn't matter. Either one. Because there are two Kobe Lakers that have won championships. So, okay. That's fair enough. I, I, I like that. You know, my, my pick is the same as yours on the uh, second one when it comes to the 90s Bulls. Jordan, Pippen, Rodman, Ron Harper, uh, you know, Steve Kerr, uh, Phil Jackson against the, the early 2000 Lakers, Shaq, Kobe, uh, Ori, D. Fish. Yeah. Bill Jackson is a coach on that one as well. But my other pick, I'm not going to go completely Lakers on, across the board just for entertainment purposes. I'm going to say the Warriors as well because, I mean, that Warriors team, if they had won, if they had beaten the Cavs and they were going for four in a row, uh, three in a row, four in a row. They'd be amazing right now, but they got broken up. It's okay. I'm going to say that Warriors team, and I was thinking of teams that they match up well against, and I was thinking a team that mirrors them is the 90s Rockets, that Robert Ory, Elijah Wan, Kenny Smith team. I think that would be a really good matchup. That could probably go six, maybe even seven games in that series. What about in baseball, Chris? What are, what are two teams, in, uh, you know, two matchups in baseball that you maybe would love to see over the years oh man i wish i had my dodgers hat because you know i'm gonna have to defer you took me to my first baseball game a dodger game you know baseball more than me let me hear your opinion on that one big wave and i am a huge dodger fan i love the dodgers i bleed dodger blue but in this one i'm not picking the dodgers at all because as we all know the Dodgers in the past 30-some years have not been successful. And frankly, I mean, as of late, their teams have been great, but I can't really think of teams that would match up with them. So here's how I went. I went with the 90s Braves team, because, you know, I was a huge Braves fan back then, against those uh, early to mid-2000 Red Sox teams, the team that broke the curse. Uh, I think that would be a really good matchup. That Braves team against that Red Sox team, pitching and hitting. I think it would be a good matchup. And then I can't believe I'm going to say this one, man. This pains me in my heart of hearts to say this. But uh, the 2010-ish San Francisco Giants against those 90s Yankees teams that dominated the 90s, I think those would be two great matchups in baseball that I, I think would be very, very fun to watch. Wow. Yeah, those are four awesome teams. They were built 
around good solid hitting as well as some pitchers that were big time um that pedro staff i mean it was amazing how pedro wasn't even the ace in the playoffs when they got there he was just a you know he had to battle his inner demons against those yeah. dangerous yankees yeah. I, I like that tribe song coming with more hits than the braves and the yankees so like the braves that's your squad right you knew how good they were um the yankees were america's team i still talked to an old friend of mine about that year that they were going for four in a row and in the bottom of yeah. the ninth mariano yeah. rivera blew it in the year that everybody was a yankees fan so to stop the nostalgia, I'll go Braves, Yankees, and just because I think Fernando's Dodgers had something up their sleeves, I'd like to see them knock off those Giants that, you know, you rated okay. pretty high. Well, that, okay. That's I just like that. nostalgia. I like that. I like that. You know, hey, I love it. And then we'll go NFL, and I think you want me to, to go first because I think you're still kind of thinking about what the matchups. So, uh, so for the people that don't know me very well, up until this year, and, and we'll get to that in a minute, but up until this year, I was a huge New England Patriots fan. So, having said that, I would like to see my Pats, my six Super Bowl ring Patriots, against those 80, uh, 80s, basically, San Francisco 49ers. I think that'd be a great matchup. Joe Montana, Rathman. Uh, Taylor Rice. I mean, that would be great to watch. Plus, the coaching matchup in that would be fun mm -hmm. to watch. I agree. And then I went with what everybody else, not me, calls America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, against those Ravens teams, those two Ravens Super Bowl teams with that stellar defense. I think those Ravens teams with that defense against that juggernaut offense that the Cowboys had with Aikman, Evan Smith, and Michael Irvin, I think that would be fun to watch as well. That's awesome. So I guess, you know, I like those answers, and I should tell people that 42, that's our age. So we only go back as far as 78. We can't pick the Steelers or the Big Red Machine or the Celtics or, you know, any of those teams that everybody said was really good. Um, every team you said was so good. I don't think I could think of a better one. There's teams that, like, for one year were really good, like Shannon Sharps, Ravens with Ray Lewis and, you know, a couple of those guys. So I would say Montana's 49ers um, against the Patriots. I'm going to agree with you on that one. And then um, in my lifetime, there hasn't really been a dynasty, but, you know, Terrell Davis was pretty good with the Broncos. I would like to see how they would do against maybe uh, Manning and the Colts, you know. Okay. Manning was pretty good. Like 80s Raiders teams. Would you like to see like the Lyle Alzado, you know, uh, 80s Raiders? Well, I think part of the the argument here is you know like, like a dynasty, right? Correct. So unfortunately, in football, you don't see that as much. You named pretty much three or four solid dynasties, but I can't say that about the Raiders. Unfortunately, maybe in the 70s, but on the okay. 80s. So having said what I just said about, you know, the, the Patriots and everything like that, so the reason why I was a big Patriots fan, for those of you that don't know me very well, is I'm a huge University of Michigan fan. Now, having said that, we all know where the GOAT, Tom Brady, went to college. That was Michigan. Okay. So I follow Tom Brady. I'm a big Brady guy. So now my allegiance is with Tampa Bay. Do you think it is – can you be considered a legitimate sports fan if you change – allegiances with teams and follow players or do you think it's faux pas to follow a player over a team all right i got a call from the sponsors and they were like you're gonna have to cut this this uh subject a little shorter but this is this is what i think all right i think you gotta stick with your team so players are special i loved magic he was my first best favorite player and fortunately he never left but the next guy after him was Shaq. And I loved Shaq, but I didn't like Miami when he went to Miami. So I'm going to say I'm going to bleed hard with my team, whoever's on there. And if they leave, if Sheffield leaves, if Piazza leaves, if, you know, Shaq leaves, then I'm sorry, I can't root for them anymore. I can okay. root for them, like, on the side, but not against my team. 
understand. Now, real quick, the argument that I have with that, Chris, and I'll make this real quick, is growing up in Los Angeles, you know, we didn't really have a football team for a long time. So it was kind of like when I started liking football, we didn't really have a team. So, you know, me growing up, I was a Marino guy. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was uh, you know, Warren Sapp guy. I liked players because I didn't really have allegiance to a team. So that's why I, I go with players over teams in football because we didn't really have one. I do like the Rams. I think the Rams are, are up and coming. They're a team of the future. But we'll see what happens with that. Now, Chris, which sport, having we're living in this pandemic era, unfortunately there are no sports right now, and we'd love to see them get back to which tough. sport do you think will be back first of the of the three majors? Which sport do you think comes back first? Man, up until the riots last night, I was going to say the NBA because the baseball players are so greedy. But I think that you're seeing NBA players leading rallies in Atlanta and different cities where who knows where their head's at now. Um, I would say right now hockey. <laughs> Which sport do you think? What about you, Dave? What about you, Big Wave? Big Wave, Dave? Um, I would say the NBA. I think the NBA was the first team to stop playing, and I know they've expressed they want to be the first team back. Um, I think the NBA season starts first. I think they're 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 itching to go. Now the question with the NBA is, what what do they do? Do they just go into that that playing? playoff format or do they start this is what i heard thursday in four days they're gonna do a vote um they gotta have a certain percentage but it looks like the gm's already in support so thursday they'll do the vote for 20 teams so some teams will get to play a regular season and eventually just gonna be the regular playoffs in orlando i'm pretty sure it'll stay similar to that script and it'll be in the middle of july so they didn't want to make a decision until before june which makes sense because a lot of stuff's happening right now in the world before june but uh, looks like okay. Thursday's the call day. Okay. So which sport do you think needs to start up the most? Which sport do you think, if they don't play this season, is really, really going to affect that sport going forward? Uh, I think that, you know, sports are followed by a lot of people, but different people watch different sports. So, like, um, probably football because it's the most popular one. But for me, it'd be basketball, just because the Lakers are so close. Um, okay. Oh, and the ball came down on me right there, Dave. You didn't like your answer there. Yeah, I know. It's like, like ain't going to happen. <laughs> so what about you? What do you think? What do we need? Uh, Major League Baseball. I, I, like you said earlier, you know, those players are so greedy. And you mean to tell me that we've sat here and suffered through a pandemic for the last so many months. And we're sitting here, you know, clamoring for sports. And you're not going to play over some money, over whether you should get paid for a full season or not. I think that's ridiculous. We saw what happened to baseball in the 90s when they had the lockout and how much that affected the game. I mean, they had to coerce or entice players to go take steroids in order to bring fans back, which took the sport back 20 years. So I think baseball definitely is a sport. It needs to come back. And I'm also biased because I'm a Dodger fan. And the Dodgers made a huge trade to go get Mookie Betts this year and David Price. And if we lose those guys without even them playing a game, that's just baffling to me. Did you hear so what I would say baseball? Did you hear what Price did? No. In June when the, the money starts running out, he's gonna give a thousand dollars to each minor leaguer. Because I think they're limited to a certain amount, like maybe a couple thousand a month, so he's gonna bump it up to about 200 minor leaguer Dodgers. Uh, so he's given up 200K this month to help them out. Uh, but I thought the question was, who do like fans in general, what sport do they want to see come back? So you're saying... No, I, I was saying you, personally. I don't oh, okay, okay, yeah, basketball. So you want okay. baseball, I want basketball. That's cool. All I'll... right, and then uh, let's do this one, Chris. Give me... I mean, I think I kind of already know where, where you're going with the NBA, but give me a prediction for the NBA uh, finals and the uh, NFL finals. We're not going to go baseball yet. All right. We don't know what's going on with them, but give me the NBA finals, your matchup and winner, and the NFL, the Super Bowl. Well, I'll do the East. I'll let you do the West. I, I got Toronto and Milwaukee in the East. I don't know who you see in the West. 
So, I mean, you're probably not going to agree on that one. Uh, I mean, the West, I, obviously I'm going to go with the Lake Show because they are the best team, in, in my opinion, in basketball. I can't go the Clippers, man. They're still a little brother. They still haven't proven themselves. I'm going to say, I'll say Denver. Denver. I'll say Denver's the surprising team that gets to the, the Western Conference Finals. Uh, I'll go with Toronto Lakers NBA final matchup. I think Toronto gets back there. Actually, you know what? I scratch that. Scratch that. Erase it. Take it out of your mind. Pretend like I never said that. Let's go with uh, Giannis. Let's go with Milwaukee and the Lakers. The Kareem Abdul Jabbar finals. And we'll, you know, we'll see. But I think that's going to be your, your finals in the NBA. Yeah. Man, I can't argue that. Yeah, I would say Lakers, uh, Clippers. You know, I want to say Lakers, Houston, but I'll say Lakers, Clippers, and then Lakers will take care of business. Uh, there won't be any, any pressure of playing at home. The Lakers are incredible on the road this year. Yeah, they definitely by far and away have the best road record, and I think that's because of their simplicity on offense. But that same simplicity in offense is what the Bucks are good at. So if the Lakers can stop Giannis, they're good. If they can't stop Giannis, man, that could go seven. But Lake Show, baby, we're tying the Celtics this year. NFL, man, you go ahead. Help me bless me with some picks, man, so I can make some money this year. <laughs> well, the NFL, that one's, I think, a little more. Got to gotta think about that one a little bit more. I, I do, obviously, like I mentioned earlier with Brady. Did you say NFL or MLB? Which one did you want to? No, I, didn't, I, I didn't say baseball. We're, we're gonna, not going to talk about baseball for right now until they get their act together. Well, when it comes to football, I mean, I'm not going to go with – best teams right now. I'll give you a couple teams I really like. Obviously, Tampa Bay with Brady and Gronk now puts them up in the mix. Uh, I do like the Saints, though, too. I think the Saints are a very legitimate team. Um, and I think if Seattle can do some things, they may be a tough team to beat, too. But I'm going to say that the NFC and then the AFC is going to be Kansas City, obviously. And I think Baltimore is going to be right there. And if Houston ever gets their act together, maybe Houston will have a chance. All right, Dave. You know I'm a Boston hater, all right? And that includes anybody that's ever played in that region, including the legendary L.A. player Paul Pierce. But Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going nowhere next year. They are not making the playoffs. As a matter of fact, if they finish above 500, i I'd be surprised. You so, heard it here first. So let's do this then. If you said you're going to make that prediction, if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finish over 500 and make the playoffs, are you willing to wear some Tampa Bay Buccaneers gear for the playoffs? Yes. And if they don't, are you willing to wear Clippers gear? <laughs> oh, boy. I'll tell you what. I won't go Clippers gear, but I will go with whatever team – Beats the Bucks in that division. So Atlanta, New Orleans, um, or Carolina, I believe, is in their division. Whatever team does better than Tampa Bay in that division, I'll wear their gear. All right, Dave, I'm going to get my T-shirt tomorrow that says Belichick is God because I got the New England Patriots getting to the AFC Championship against the Kansas City Chiefs next year. This guy who just said he hates all things Boston is going with the New England Patriots. Okay, so in that note, who's going to be their quarterback? Who leads them to the AFC Championship? They need to get a use. They need to get Brett Hundley from UCLA. No, I'm just kidding. No, I like Fitzpatrick. Um, if they could work something, maybe two out really, like you know, forces his hand in there. So it's probably not going to happen with Fitzpatrick. But if you ask me, I would say get him. It's magic. Uh, what about Cam Newton? Yeah. You know who I really liked was Dalton, but I didn't know he had that Dallas or Texas connection. What you said about Cam Newton sounds good. Um, he's a big guy. He should be able to stand in the pocket, whether or not he can understand, you know, the Belichick system. Okay. I think he can. He played at Auburn, a big-time system, so he should be able to. All right. So, real quick, we've we'll, we'll, we got a couple more topics, and then we'll get out of, get out of everybody's hair and enjoy their Sunday. You mentioned the hoodie, Bill Belichick, arguably the greatest NFL coach in history. Chris, give me your your favorite or your best coaches over the last 30-some years in sports that you've been following in each sport. So NBA, baseball, and football, give me your best coaches in your opinion. 
And I know we're probably be tough at basketball because there's a few. So. Yeah, like you can't put John Wooden in there because you said last 30 years, but the pyramid of success to me is like the ultimate knowledge for any sport. But I'll, I'm going to say any sport, right? So you got to say in baseball there's somebody there. I used to really like Jim Leland, this new guy, you know, for the Cubs. Seems like he had a good system, but uh, I'm not going to put any MLB managers in there. Tory sucked on the Dodgers. Give me just I mean, what I mean any sport. What I mean is give me your best coach for the NBA. Give me your best coach in baseball and your best coach you think in football over the years. Pat Riley for basketball. Okay. With, by by a hair over no championship. Hubie Brown. Um, then I got in football probably Belichick. Um, Cower was close, and then. In baseball, I like Leland and I guess Francona. All right, all right. And again, you can tell that Chris and I have known each other a long time because uh, I agree with you a thousand percent with Pat Riley. I think Phil Jackson was a success of his players. I think Pat Riley did more to get the best out of his players than Phil Jackson did. I think his assistants did more than Phil did. In football, completely agree with you. you can't argue with the hoodie. The, the success is in the, you know, uh, it, you just look at it. You look at everything he's done in coaching. And in baseball, there's one name you forgot. I agree completely. I love Jimmy Leland. I like Terry Francona. But the one name you Sparky. forgot that I, I think cannot be overlooked is Bobby Cox. Yeah. And I think the success the Atlanta Braves had, Bobby Cox, I would go with him. So that those are my picks. Um, and then, Chris, the most annoying fan base that you would say is the case in the three sports. So in, in football, who's the most annoying fan base that you, you would say is, is out there? Man, I, I haven't been to enough games. I would go based off games. I went to a Broncos game and sat behind the most annoying Broncos fan ever. But I would say probably, even though I'm one of their fans, I'm going to say Raiders fans are pretty annoying. Okay. Um, right. I'm a Raiders fan, though. I am a Raiders fan. That is, you are a big Raiders fan at that. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. I can't stand Cowboy fan because each and every year, Cowboy fans seem to think they're going to the Super Bowl. Right, right. And they seem to think the team they have is the greatest team to slice bread. So I'm going to say the Cowboys. I when just feel like your safety is in danger if you face a Raider fan where, you know, you could get out of there alive. Against the Cowboy fan. Well, being a Raider fan, though, Chris, aren't you happy with John Gruden there and their move to Vegas now? I mean, does that give you any sort of, you know, warm, fuzzy feeling when you're at home in bed at night? <laughs> yes, I wake up in the morning dreaming about Raider championships. Uh, I think that the Vegas dynamic helps a lot because of, yeah, the market as well as the money. The money's going to be behind them, and sometimes that, you know, helps sometimes, so... See if they get some free agents, some help in the books. Uh, we didn't finish, though, right? Did you give me a baseball one? You gave me a baseball one. Well, I gave one. you football. I said the Cowboys. And then I'll go baseball. In baseball, as much as I thought you know, I'd love to see them in a matchup, I hate them with a passion because I bleed blue. So the San Francisco Giants fans mm -hmm. are the most annoying fans in my book in baseball because I've also had encounters with them up in San Francisco before. And, yeah, so I would have to say without a doubt that San Francisco Giants. I feel bad for them, but it's annoying to listen to Padres fans because <laughs> they never win, but they act like they're big brother and they're little brother. But, you know. Yeah, it's like Sorry, like the Cowboys, I think. Uh, I agree with you on that. But just overall, I think the Giants makes it the reason why I think the Giants. But Padre fan is annoying, too, because you're right. Padre is delusional thinking each and every year they're in it. So. All right, let, what a, let's what mix it up for a sec. Let's mix it up for a sec. What's the last, you know, sporting thing that you've seen? What's the last thing you watched to, like, keep your mind fresh on sports? Well, I watched that that Brady Mickelson Woods Peyton Manning golf uh, outing, which was very entertaining to watch. Tom Brady proved he's human in that because he didn't look very good for some of that matchup, but he did hit the shot of the match. I watched that golf match. I watched every single hole, which is not like me. I do respect golf and have gained a new respect for golf since playing golf with you. Um, but I don't watch golf from 
first hole to 18 hole. I just don't, but I did on that one. What about you? Um, it's all YouTube for me now, so I just watch like tutorials, stuff like that. An actual game, like the last game I probably watched was probably a Laker game against the Bulls, where okay. Kobe was doing really good in '98. Um, he comes in off the bench at that time. And the Lakers were so pumped up, like Shaq was pushing Jordan, blocking his shots after the foul. Like, they were just kind of like showing off, showboating. I was like, man, you don't do that against good teams. The Bulls won it that year, but the Lakers didn't. And a lot of the videos I found were Jordan asked Pippen to cover Kobe because he's tired. And I saw it, man. Jordan's like, yo, switch. And Kobe just turned it on. Like, Kobe's like, oh, now Pippen's guarding me? Thank yeah. you. And, wow, it was so nice to look at 98 Kobe. So. I agree. I think in the, uh, over this pandemic era, basketball has been the sport I have missed watching the most. And uh, I, I have watched some older um, Lakers Kobe success videos. Obviously, with the unfortunate passing of the great Kobe Bryant earlier this year, it's it is, it's tough, you know, and, and so you watch those videos kind of for nostalgia, but um, the force is strong with this one. <laughs> um, but um, I, uh, I would, I would say you're right. I would say basketball is probably what I've missed. And you know me, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I watch a lot of wrestling videos uh, lately. But but I would say basketball is probably. The, the matchups, the old slam dunk contest, things like that. I like that tangent because I did watch wrestling very recently, and I watched uh, a lot of Macho Man. I was interested to know that he was related to the professor. I didn't know that. Um, those two guys are like, you know, part maybe Samoan or something, and they like really enjoyed watching old school. And the Macho Man had an issue getting the crowd entertained. So his brother was like, hey, the professor said, why don't we just pretend we're like this old school, like Samoan dude that used to come out. So then all of a sudden, Macho Man transformed his personality, and the professor said he never went, like, he never acted outside of that Macho Man personality after that again. He said, no, anytime I talk to my brother like that, he was like, he was Macho Man after that. Can you imagine that, Dave, if I just was like, no. Be like the Hulkster, and then every time I called you, you'd be like, Hey there, brother! How you doing? Like, that'd they be... That, they call that kayfabe in wrestling when you stay in your character <laughs> all the time. You know, 24 hours a day, it's called kayfabe. And, yeah, Macho Man was one of those guys. I, I had a guy when I was working on the radio that I worked with that claims, he claims, now there's no proof, but he claims he was Macho Man's, like, double. So when they would go to an event, instead of having the macho man there, you know, signing or whatever, doing pictures, it would be him. But his macho man impression wasn't very good. Did I he look he did similar? Him, was know? he a so, short tan guy? With... No, he was like, he was like kind of a little shorter than me. He had long, straggly hair. He had a beard like macho man, but he was a white guy. And he just didn't sound like the macho man. And he was a fall down drunk, too. But he said he hung out with all those guys. He said that the, 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 he would drink with the Million Dollar Man, the Undertaker, guys like that. So. I'm running out of data, so I think this video is going to cut short. But it's good because we got to 30 minutes, and I feel like we talked about some good stuff, Dave. I agree, Chris. I agree. Let's do this again. I think we're going to have some, some other guests the next show we do. I'm looking forward to it. And the next show we do, Chris will be coming up with the topics so I'll be looking forward to that. I, I hope I had some entertaining topics for everybody today. Chris, always a pleasure. We're going to be doing this a lot. So Hold on, Big um, Wave. It's your show. Um, are we talking only sports on this sports show? Chris, we can talk whatever you want to talk about. You want to talk about politics. You want to talk about sports. You want to talk about movies. We can talk about everything that comes up, Chris. Favorite ice cream? Favorite ice cream? Favorite ice cream works for me, too. I'm going to say, uh, well, uh, lately it's been Jamoke Almond Fudge, but I am a mint and chip guy. Uh, I like Jamoke Almond Fudge, and mint's good, but Jamoke Almond Fudge, I'm put that pretty close to the top. I got the kids loving that. I bought it the other day. They love it. They're like, it tastes like coffee. So, <laughs> But anyway, this is Big Wave Dave and Showtime. Chris Cannon signing off for you. We love you. Stay safe. Take care.